I'm going to talk, just kind of go back to, you know, what before Istvan like completely geeked out on the gear slides, um, you know, the first thing he said was that content is really much more important than, you know, what gear you're using or the kind of, you know, absolute finest detail of image quality or whatever. And I just really quickly, before we get into Greg's uh, talk and actually getting you all to do some stuff, um, I want to show if I can find it now. Um, just an example of uh, a project that we did, okay, that in fact used really kind of like completely low technology. Um, so there was this campaign. Uh, so back, I'll give you some context. So uh, a few years ago, a few years ago, uh, uh, those of us that are involved in overdose prevention programs uh, and trying to get them expanded further and to expand access to naloxone, which is an opioid overdose antidote medication, uh, with some <coughs> funders, some government, government agencies uh, in a number of places, we were getting pushback, basically, you know, people saying there's no evidence that this actually reduces, you know, mortality or whatever, you know, it's not really worth funding. And, you know, in fact, it was this kind of programming was so new, relatively speaking, that there wasn't, you know, the sort of degree of, you know, scientific evidence, peer-reviewed evidence uh, that we see with needle exchange. Um, you know, the problem with our field is that uh, because people hate drug users, we're hold, held to a much higher standard for, you know, producing evidence and you seem to have to kind of keep proving yourself over and over again. Um, so uh, a group of us uh, in initiated by the Harm Reduction Coalition in New York City started this thing called I'm the Evidence and that basically got people from all over the world uh, to shoot with cell phone cameras, with little flip cameras, with anything they had on hand, just personal testimony of a couple minutes, uh, people's own experiences of being saved uh, with naloxone or administering it to someone else. Um, and this is just a very short uh, kind of compilation, compilation video um, that shows a few clips from uh, some of the ones that were filmed in New York City. And again, all, the, all these were shot with just like cell phones and stuff like that. These are stories of people that have witnessed overdose. And most of them have been trained in the use of naloxone and able to administer it, saving the life of their friend, family member, or a stranger. The scientific evidence is developing that naloxone works. It's important that you also hear these stories in order to better see its impact. Before he could even get the needle out of his arm, he collapsed to the floor. I was called in for an emergency. We had an on-site overdose. Someone came running up and grabbed me and said that uh, a friend was OD'd in the street. Well, the next thing I knew, it was just loud, uh, you know, he had went straight down to the floor. A client came into the syringe exchange screaming that their friend was turning blue. I came home to my apartment and found her, her, her face was white as a sheet of paper and her lips were blue as blue jeans and I was terrified. I went to the bathroom and I shot three bags of heroin and I had like this old, ultimate OD. I ended up having to hit him with Narcan. blue but he was still breathing. And um, I administered intramuscular Narcan. Instantaneously, I knew what I had to do. I pulled my kid out and I uh, gave him his first injection of the intranasal Narcan. You know, what I did was I took out my kid, you know, and I drew up, you know, the Narcan, you know, and I gave him an injection. I grabbed my kid, I did the sternum rub on him. There was no response. So I immediately injected the person right in the thigh with the Narcan. He came out of it when I hit him with the Narcan. After the second injection, he came back and the color returned to his face. With the second dose of Alexone and the rescue breathing, we put him back. He didn't at first respond, you know. I didn't wait, I gave him another one. And his, he, he gasped for air. That's when I grabbed him and picked him up. She shot me with Narcan four times and I woke up with, you know, thank God. And um, I am very grateful. I was just so lucky that the knock song worked, you know, and that person is here, here today to um, thank me about it. The color returned to his face, and it had a big impact on me. He just looked so completely different. I actually felt this person, his breathing come back. We put him back, that, and that's something that will stick with me forever, because it, it was just so uh, powerful, it was like a fight 
for life and death. And uh, without the Lexome, we could be dead. Overdose is actually one of the leading cause of death among people who use drugs, among people with HIV, and among young people in general. We know that if drug users and their parents have naloxone at home, if they have naloxone in their pockets, they can save lives of those who overdose. I was able to use naloxone to save lives. I felt rather calm and confident in what I was doing because I was absolutely sure that one shot of naloxone would reverse this overdose and the person will be back to life. It's, it's brief and it's, it's pretty easy to administer and I, I wish I had it then because if I had it then she'd still be alive today. As of, as of this day I brought back five people. It's a great program and I'm glad I'm part of it. It saved my life many times. I, I think that naloxone should be distributed out more, more liberally than it is now. So, you know, again, that's just sort of to emphasize that, I mean, that was no budget. An intern at HRC put that together, um, you know, just with getting people to volunteer their time. And, uh, you know, the a lot of those clips, you know, you hear a bunch of noise in the background and, like, the lighting is weird and there's, like, fluorescent buzzing and stuff like that. But that's not what you're paying attention to when you watch those. Uh, it's that kind of personal, powerful testimony um, and, you know, I think that kind of really gets back to what Ishvan was saying, that if you've got the right subject uh, and the right person who's compelling, um, you've got potentially a great video to work.